My name is Vanda Oliveira and I am co-founder of Bantu Makers, which is a startup studio of venture builder here based in Luanda. So what we do is we create new companies, in this case, new startups that we're going to share with you a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Ricardo, I'm also a co-founder of Bantu Makers. Uh, I guess that's it for me. <laughs> Oh, so you are creating startups? Yes. Yes, that's basically uh, our core business, let, uh, let's say. Uh, we already launched two, uh, a crowdfunding platform called Deia, uh, which is actually the first crowdfunding platform in the country, and Salu, which is a micro jobs platform um, to help people who are unemployed or underpaid connecting with the people who need their services. Mm -hmm. How do you decide on what startups to start? Uh, or to invest in or incubate uh, and yeah, so on? Incubate. Uh, so it's a, it's a very quite uh, funny process. We, start, we st always start with a problem, right? So we identify a problem. In the case of Dea, there was a problem in the democratized... Dem Democratize access to finance. Yeah, access to <laughs> finance because it's very hard to get a loan at the banks for specific projects. So we we thought it was cool to actually find a crowdfunding platform where people with similar ideas or, or and create a community around the, that idea that can support that idea. Kind of like how Kickstarter got started back uh, in the United States. So I thought it was a cool project to start off. So that was our first project. And Salo, we took the opportunity of the unemployment rate <coughs> that was very high back in about two years ago. Still very high. Back it was very high two years ago. And there was a, a lot of talented people at home because many people got their jobs cut. cut and uh, we, found, uh, we found it interesting to connect those people because, okay, they got skills, they're at home, and I bet they can use some of their time to help out those people that still got jobs and can pay for those type of types of tasks. So that's how our process starts. We start with the, with the problem, then we create a solution using the design thinking process uh, around the human being, of course, how can we solve that problem? And well, then we, then we launch it, mm -hmm. we test it. And we prototype. We prototype you know? real quick, mm -hmm. see if we can fail as fast as possible, of course, because mm -hmm. the more failures we can iterate, the better the final version it will be. What about Bantu makers? What problem were you trying to solve with that? So with the Bantu makers, we started uh, because we wanted, we had so many ideas, but at the same time, we identified a lot of problems to solve in our market. Um, and uh, the, the, finally, we realized that the studio model was the best one to, to, yeah, to, to follow. Forward because we could create several we could work on several ideas at the same time that's what we do uh, we could create several several startups at the same time more or less um, and we would be the creators because we are also entrepreneurs and we, we would be the investors because we are the one investing uh, first uh, in in those ideas so for us was this to create a uh, to start creating and start solving those problems and build a team from there um, and and start investing in, our, in, ourself, in ourselves. Mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. And what is a studio model? So, okay, the studio <laughs> yeah. model is basically, uh, is basically working on our own ideas um, and we act as entrepreneurs as we are but we also act as an incubator, even though we're not, we are not typical an incubator, but we incubate our own ideas and we invest on our own ideas. So the studio model is working on several ideas at the same time, uh, launch them in the very short time, uh, mostly in, we just pro quickly prototype and we create a, a minimal viable product and we launch and we test the market and uh, if we prove that this project has um, a future, has potential, then we create a team and we create a company that will 
uh, grow by by itself. What is motivating you guys? Because to be honest, the entrepreneurial journey is not easy, and that's yeah. just with one business but like to be able to build something like this where you realize okay there's so many things to um to be solved and yeah we're about that life let's do it like where mm -hmm. does that come from <sighs> our motivation question, yeah, yeah uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not actually uh our motivation comes from different uh different we can say different challenges different challenges yes i guess my motivation would be a little bit different than yours uh, mm -hmm. mine was because um well there's a when i was in the united states because i did my education there I, I thought there there's a lot of recorders there already how many people can i change or influence directly when once i go back home how many projects can i create mm -hmm. how many sustainable business can i create and help the community so not in a patriotic way because i'm not, not only thinking about angola i'm thinking about africa itself because mm -hmm. i had a lot of african colleagues who had these great ideas and great projects but many of them end up end up staying there i was like how are you going to help by staying there you're mm -hmm. going to help the american economy that is very evolved and all that so i thought it was a created a challenge to myself to prove that I can create a sustainable business in Africa that can compete with the giants of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think my motivation is not very far from Ricardo because I live it all my life uh, in Europe. So for me, the motivation was to see a lot of potential here, a lot of young people uh, eager to learn, to have an opportunity to show. And I realized that I could actually cause more impact here because I already have a, a great experience, work experience, and <coughs> I, I work with startups uh, for already for almost 10 years. And I, I saw that I, I, I actually I can be helpful here more than I am in a mature market like in, in Europe. So that was my motivation to return and, and to start uh, creating here. Yeah. Mm -hmm to have this impact. So pulling from both your motivations, like a lot of potential in Africa, but also the need to create sustainable businesses. If you could put it like in a nutshell, like the starter pack for starting a startup in Africa, what, mm -hmm. what does it take to do that? A lot of, I would start with a lot of resilience <laughs> a lot of determination and uh, uh, persistence uh, because it's not easy it's not easy to be an entrepreneur anywhere in the world but here i would say it probably is 10 times uh, difficult because of the context uh, the lo local context the politics the economics uh, it's very challenging so I think every entrepreneur needs to be very resilient and very also very optimistic because yeah. every day you see a lot of um, situations and you find so many obstacles that you you might think twice if you really want to be here doing this. So you need to be optimistic and you need to be very focused about what is your goal? What do, what do you want? What what do you want to achieve? Um, I, I would mm -hmm. say starting from from, yeah, from focus, especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't share much, but I'll share a funny story that I tell Vanda all the time <laughs> when we comparing our ideas. So if this was in Silicon Valley and stuff like that, and one of these days it rained, right? And I usually come around here nine, ten, but this specific day. I had my kid at home because he was sick. So I had to wait for my maid, for my, the babysitter to come over so I could leave and come to work. And I tell Vanna this all the time, in Silicon Valley, nobody has this type of problems. It mm -hmm. rained, it got late because the taxis were not passing through because the, the road conditions are so bad. So I had to wait almost two hours because she was late. And then I was like here and then I couldn't co complete my tasks on that day because it rained. Not because she was late, because it rained, because usually she, she comes on time. So I don't think anyone in Silicon Valley or anywhere in the world deals, deals with the same adversities that we deal mm. on our daily basis. 
Yeah, there are so these small, small little things thing. that happen on our on our everyday life that really yeah, and the internet got slow because it rained. So yes, it's... internet <laughs> uh, uh, energy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How did you How did you finance the start of Bantu Makers? Okay. Um, you or to... even the other enterprises that you that you mm -hmm. created. What's your philosophy behind it? How did you How did you launch it? Okay, so we started with our own capital, uh, but I, I, I actually I have to confess that probably we are um, an exception comparing to the, I would no. say, the whole country, uh, because we actually, we had savings, um, which is not very common. Uh, I don't know if it's for the whole Africa, but it's very difficult for especially young people here in Angola to, to save. Uh, because life is so many um, challenges, yeah, so many hazards and so many adversities. But so we started with our own capital because we have uh, our own savings from 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 our our previous jobs. Um, so that help us to 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 start. But also because we had the experience before uh, starting companies. Uh, Ricardo uh, had experience in starting companies in in the U.S. and well, in I, Angola. Not in in Angola, actually. sorry, <laughs> and uh, I also had experience in starting in, in in Europe. So we took a very lean approach. We didn't want to start with um, uh, spending too much money, and because we knew the market was very difficult. So we started with a very lean approach. We we still have a very lean approach. Um, and we try to work with as many strategic partners as we can find. So to answer your question, we uh, after we run out of money, of course, <laughs> it, it happens almost to every startup. <laughs> but we did a small crowdfunding among our family, friends and fools. Some, <laughs> no, no, not so many fools, but most friendly uh, f uh, friends and family. So we managed to raise some money from from them and to 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 continue to work until we finally uh, could find um, a more sustainable business model. Uh, we found uh, through strategic partnerships with big companies, including uh, a bank, one of the biggest bank in, in Angola. So we managed to close a partnership with them. And actually that helped us a lot in terms of sustainability, financial sustainability, and to and allowed us to keep doing our, our work and, and keep working on the other ideas to, de to develop. Um, fortunately, right now we start seeing our crowdfunding platform growing a little bit, so they uh, is gaining some traction. Uh, but we are still educating the public because crowdfunding is quite new in the country. So we, we are still educating the public, but uh, we now can manage actually to generate some revenue. Uh, we are not profitable yet. I think it will take a few more years to be really profitable. But we managed to 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 generate some revenue, and we are working on other, on another uh, strategic partnerships. But mostly we are bootstrapping uh, as a as a as a small startup studio, um, and we actually are also looking for for investors, but not in a very active way. So because we don't want only money from, from, from investors, we want also they network, they knowledge, they experience and access to market. So um, for now, I think we are good in terms of bootstrapping, but of course it would be nice to have a bigger team and uh, we could work on more projects. Uh, At the same time, yeah. yeah. Let's talk a bit about your initial entrepreneurial experience because you just mentioned that mm -hmm. Ricardo had started businesses before. You had some entrepreneurial experience in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. So, Ricardo, maybe you can start with mm -hmm. what was the first idea sure. you ever had? What did you sell? What did you market? What did you learn? Oh, funny thing. Um, so, <clears throat> back in high school, the first things that I started to sell was... Um, 
pirated DVDs, actually. Pirated DVDs. <laughs> yeah, pirated DVDs and Don't do this at home, kids. Yeah, that. That's illegal. It was illegal, silly legal. Well, so. today you have Netflix and, <laughs> and all this well, stuff. So I started by selling pirated DVDs and MP3 player, MP3 music. albums, mm -hmm. music and stuff like that. Uh, but many of you won't remember this. Many young kids won't remember this. But in the early Nokias, it was very hard to make ringtones, right? So I would sell ringtones as well. Because you can just make some ringtones. So this is that song, you know, and you can just sell that. So I was doing these small businesses. Uh, then I evolved. Not really evolved, but yeah. <laughs> I grew up. <laughs> and one of the, the business that I created that is still operational, I was one of co-founders, was this small software company where we used to do websites. We, do, we still do websites, logos, and stuff like that. I'm not a partner there anymore, but uh, we still have a close relationship. And then I also launched a new, I was trying to launch a news company, like a, a tech, tech blog company where you can just sell all the media and sell ads and stuff like that. So those were the primary business that I created that I was really focused, focused on. Then I worked a few years. When I came back, I worked a few years. Actually, when, not when I came back. I worked mo mostly as a freelancer when I was on and off from the United States and then I met Vanda then I she mm -hmm. I was in the process of creating another business another business it was a software house where people just because apps were there was an app craze of, of, over here it was like hey Ricardo uh, can you do this app I want this app I want this I want that so I was like you know what let me create a proper company and just start shipping apps to people but it's not a very sustainable business. I didn't find it as a, I didn't look at it as a sustainable business because of reasons. And Vanda came with this idea of a startup studio and I figured out it will be a very, a much bigger and rewarding challenge than actually a software house. And that's why I came to be at Banzo Makers. <laughs> oh, so in my case, um, all my, Previous ventures were they failed actually <laughs> was not were not successful <laughs> at all. Uh, so I started in university. Uh, my university uh, where I was studying Portugal, uh, they had an incubator. So um, they motivate students to to start their own business. So I say why not? I think I have the entrepreneurial vein. Uh, so I came up with an idea to or, um, create a platform to, for students to find international opportunities of um, studying abroad or working abroad for a short period of time, like doing internships or volunteer. Um, but yeah, it was sort of a total failure <laughs> because I was not fully committed to it and was was one of the first learnings that I had uh, about being an entrepreneur because I discovered you need to be fully committed because otherwise it's not going to work. Um, and I had some other experience. Um, I, I was co-founder uh, of another company, which was, um, it was a, a nap. Actually, I think it was something like Uber is today, but not for... Really? It was more like Uber Hits, uh, but the market was not re ready, so it was way before this was 2012. Uh, so I think we were too early in the market and we didn't actually understand um, how much we needed to, to put also in terms of work and investment. Um, but uh, it, all, all those experiences, they were great. And also, I after this, I, I just decided, okay, I'm not going to start anything else because everything I start failed. <laughs> I'm, I'm joining a startup, so it was more su successful. So I joined, I joined a, a, a startup and actually I started learning all the business aspects that I was neglecting uh, uh, before. And I think that, that prepared me for this challenge now, I can say. 
Um, where and you mentioned that you had you felt that you had the entrepreneurial spirit. Mm-hmm. Where does that come from for both of you? Because I don't personally. I was not raised to think that you should go and start your own business. I was raised to uh, get your master's degree if you can, get a PhD, get a great job, and make some money, climb the corporate ladder, and so on. So, where does that come from for 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 you? I think I had I already had this since I was a child because um besides my entrepreneurial spirit um I think I I was made to lead I like to lead people <laughs> uh, like I, not bossy but I, I like to lead people and because I I think I'm a creative person I have lots of ideas and I like to create I like to 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 sketch I like to think about okay how can I transform this idea into a business um and and I think growing up I had many opportunities to show that I really had this entrepreneurial aspect on me so when the opportunity came um I didn't think twice and because I like it to be my own boss personally as I I like to I like to to do stuff to create things and um yeah I always saw myself in this role and I was inspired uh I was inspired by many other entrepreneurs so yeah Okay to me it's um I don't know I, I never saw myself as a working 9 to 5 guy especially cuz i only i always saw myself not on the consumer side but on the producer side so i'm put things out there so people can consume so even when i well my degree is computer science but my first degree wasn't computer science even when i was taking my engineering degree i was like ah oh, i i don't mind doing this but i don't want to be working in the office all the time taking mm-hmm. orders and just spitting out everything that is given to me. I want to do my own things. So when I took computer science, I was like, oh, well, this is better. I can work for somebody or I can create jobs. And I like creating jobs more. So I guess I always had it in me. Even when I was a kid, I was producing stuff so people can consume. So I never saw myself as a, a consumer. Mm-hmm. Don't take it as a wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um and pulling from your experience as entrepreneurs what would you say are some things that are not talked about uh concerning the entrepreneurial journey that you would want people to know <laughs> oh so many things <laughs> so many things you can say but okay if you're an entrepreneur don't expect to be rich Yeah, being expect, rich can yeah. cannot and be your goal, cannot, your main goal. If you want to start a company to be rich, don't do it. Yeah, it's a that's the that's the wrong, wrong motivation. The wrong motivation you, you you're going to be disappointed because it takes a lot of <laughs> hard work, a lot of yeah. energy to trying to get rich. Yeah, especially because it's, it's going to be probably the opposite. If you want to be an entrepre- entrepreneur, you're going to be poor for a lot of months or for a lot of years. Mm-hmm. And you have to be be able to deal with that. Not in an aspect okay, the poor is a bad thing, but you get you're creating creating riches. Yeah, uh, health. You're creating wealth. Mm-hmm. So be comfortable with the fact that you might not have a billion dollars like everybody else, but you're creating wealth for a society. Mm-hmm. And that should be your main goal. So, this is not th- I don't think that start because everybody that looks at me or you entrepreneur you have money. Well, mm-hmm. I do, but it's not to be spending in boats and parties and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's to make that little money be distributed in a community in a positive way. Mhm. I know if that makes sense in English, but it makes sense in Portuguese. <laughs> but that's the way I feel like I can contribute with that little wealth wealth that I create and get a whole community of everybody everybody's rich there. Mhm. Uh I would like to share that entrepreneurship is not easy. We only see the flashing the oh yeah, a billion high, dollar company. Yeah, yeah, the highlights, but nobody tells you about the probably the many hours you had to work uh per week probably 
we, we need to work on Saturdays and Sundays, Saturdays. so we need to sacrifice our family and friends time to be here in the office because we have problems to solve um, that cannot wait. If we put them to wait, well, then we're gonna, our business will not grow. And they get bigger. I don't know, there's something about problems. You put them on the side and you, it's a baby, right? Mm -hmm. You look at them, they're in high school already. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> so you need to take care of them early. Yeah, so um, so people don't see this part that you need to solve a lot of problems on a daily basis, and that's why you need to work work hard here. Um, yeah, you probably you need to work many hours. Probably you need to work Monday to Sunday. Uh, you need to sacrifice leisure time. Nobody tells you that. Nobody tells you that you're not going to be rich from from <laughs> one day one. to another uh, and this not should should not be your goal so you're going to be uh, be an entrepreneur actually should mean at least being poor for so <laughs> quite a few <laughs> years until your business actually um, starts to create wealth, create wealth. Um, and just because you are generating revenue it doesn't mean you are profitable yet um, and nobody tells you about those little sacrifices oh, and, and mental health that too. yes and you need to take care of your mental health because you need to be careful working so hard to not have a burnout um, and some people have I, I did for example and uh, it's the worst so you need to to actually to be careful to take care of your mental your mental health so uh, this is is the most important thing um, and what else and that investors oh this is important uh, just because your idea is great in your head doesn't mean anyone will invest it uh, we think investors own us to the need to invest because our idea is great our idea, our idea can be the best idea in the world but we need to do Good some plans, work yeah. yes execution before is yeah execution is key here before any investor um especially if it's the first time we are doing it nobody knows us nobody knows our values we don't have a track record so investors will not just put a money put money in someone they don't know uh they don't have a track record so it's not easy to raise money uh but once you prove that you really can create a, a business even if it failed but you but if you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur and investors uh, will get to know your value well your second time is, is going to be much easier to raise money but uh, it's not it's, it's not an easy task how did the two of you meet mm -hmm. and then how do you work together mm -hmm. we're both abroad from what i understand and how did you kind of meet and say okay let's go to Angola and put this thing together and put this trust in each other that we can uh, actually move things forward here mm -hmm. I, uh, I better tell this because you have a cardi memory about how you met <laughs> it's funny because we met through a, a mutual friend mm -hmm. I think he recommended her to me and she called me on a Friday or Saturday I think it was a Friday or Saturday and I thought it was just another client. I was doing freelance back then. And she explained me this product. Oh, I want this idea, this uh, working startups and stuff like that. I want to know what you have time. I was like, well, I, I can do meetings on Sundays. It's okay. It was Sunday or Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. And that's how we met. So we we sat down there. We started talking. I was, I was start taking notes. I was like, you know what? At one point, I stopped taking notes. I was like, you know what? I'll be I'll be doing this, so I don't need to take notes. I'll take notes later. So I started hearing the ideas, how uh, she saw the vision. So, so because so I'm a very visual person, right? And she started uh, putting the dots there. And I started connecting the dots and I saw the big picture. I was like, okay, this is the type of challenge that I want. Somebody who can show me, hey, if we do this this way, I can make that happen. You should show me I need this to be done and I, I can make that happen. So that's how I saw myself in the project. That's how we met. So we just started working. And I think we met on, uh, on February and in March we legalized the company mm. and we started working. Mm -hmm. So it was a very fast project. 
Yeah, yeah. So. I think I think was a, uh, I think both of us were were lucky because um, I was I was looking for a co-founder and uh, our mutual friend. I, I explained oh, I'm looking for someone who can who, who can who is a developer, a programmer uh, who can do the part that I can't do because I I'm a I'm a, I'm an idea idea person. I'm a visionary in this way. But I need someone actually to materialize what I'm trying to achieve. I can mm. do some sketch, but I really need someone who could uh, programming, programming, make and it and make it happen uh, because the idea per se wouldn't do anything. So, and I explain the profile, and this friend of us of ours uh, matches us, and uh, was was perfect. I think mm -hmm. we were pretty much aligned in terms of our vision uh, on the vision Especially yeah vision. the vision and the mission and the long-term um goals and uh yeah it worked very well so you met outside of angola no 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 we, we met you here met actually here in angola. Yes. okay mm -hmm. and you thought you had a new client that calls you and you say okay let me see <laughs> let me get an idea of what i can do for her and then you say okay no let's start this company yeah, together. it's funny because all my clients that call me they have these crazy ideas oh i want to do this and i want to do that i go like okay let's sit down and they start explaining i go like so you can't do that <laughs> takes too much too much money and resources oh but how much money are we talking about and then i say the value and like oh can you make it cheaper so ex so picture this you go to the doctor i want to remove my tooth and he tells you the price and it's like oh no can you do it by half how does that work so it's same thing i mean as, uh, to me as a software developer that's the price of it i didn't make that price it is that price so you cannot ask me to make something half the price of it you otherwise you don't get that product that's just how it is. So I thought she was, she was one of those that wanted to remove my half. <laughs> <laughs> With a very big vision. So, yeah. Okay. I would just have one final question. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your advice for uh, young people on the continent today? Or in Angola? Mm -hmm. You can start this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so an advice. Uh, for I would start, I would say that, start doing um, with whatever you have. Uh, you don't need that much money, actually. I thought before starting the company, uh, I thought, yeah, we need to have a huge budget because Angola is a difficult country and everything is so expensive. But actually, you... you you don't need to, you just need to start doing with whatever you have in hands. Um, if you don't know how to program, find a programmer. Um, if you don't find it, you can learn. Uh, if I if I wouldn't find Ricardo, I probably would really uh, put myself into learning how to code. But fortunately, I didn't. Need, I don't need to because I found him. But I was learn. I was trying to learn to code before because I was like, okay, I'm. I'm. Uh, if I don't find the right person, I need to start developing. Um, so for me, it was start where you are. Don't make any excuses because conditions will be always impossible. We all, I think most of the times entrepreneurs are waiting for the right conditions, uh, the right moment with the, all the right things to start doing. And this, this time will never come. So you need to start now. And there's no better time to be an entrepreneur than now, especially not only in Angola, I would say in Africa. We are, I think, we are in a great um, in a great time to to really make an impact in people's lives to improve people's lives so i think the time is now so just start doesn't matter if you don't know about finances you can learn or you can find some there's always someone willing to help us but we need to start doing and these people will show up mm -hmm. Um, so my advice is, if anyone can do it, you can do it. If Bill Gates can do it, I can do it. If Zuckerberg can do it, you can do it. So 
it's um and it's very hard because there's a, a a mentality an african mentality that we we believe we're not capable of, of achieving greater things and hopefully i can prove that wrong and inspire other people so we need more role models mm -hmm. and if i can be one anyone can be one to be honest i'm not that special uh and it, n nor is anyone that special that is they're just lucky they have the right conditions they have that leg up to everybody but here in africa i get it, it's hard but it's not impossible mm -hmm. so if anyone can do it you can do it too you touched upon actually having failed with your initial plan like you got the funding you thought mm -hmm. okay now we're starting this business bundle makers and then you run out of money mm -hmm. how was that for you psychologically did you mm. learn anything <laughs> what was that situation like um, well it wasn't a surprise honestly because when i did the planning i told her this money will last this much this many months and i was right unfortunately yeah uh, you you're <laughs> always the pessimistic person in the team <laughs> it's just how it is because I, i know a little bit of, i'm not an expert in the market but Well, numbers don't lie, and you see the tractions. There's some correlations there. So I saw the numbers like, oh, well, this will last this many months. And I was right. It lasts that many months. So I went to a very difficult time because we, uh, mm -hmm. we had some employees under a wing. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, they, um, I can say that they are not as privileged as, uh, as probably the both of us are, mm -hmm. where I, I can budget my money and see how many... And, make it stretch for as, ma as many as many months as I can they're not that lucky they they have to pay bills they they mm -hmm. have oh uh, they have helped the family they have added costs so it was very hard for them and unfortunately we had to let them let them go but we managed to to bootstrap again and survive and me surviving mm -hmm. to bootstrapping all these months so when mm -hmm. you said you were you started to bootstrap that means okay you let go of of employees then Uh, what was the next step? You said that you brought a partner in, a big bank. How did you make this partnership happen? And what does this partnership entail, actually? Yeah, so when we, when we ran out of money and we did this small crowdfunding among our family and friends, we started to realize, okay, we need to start, we need to rethink our business model because uh, the way we, we were thinking in this market it's not going to work this is not europe this is not north america and investors will not just Pop come in the sky. yes and um so we start okay what other ways we can work um and still do what we want to do but also uh make it sustainable so we start seeing a lot of engagement from big companies, including banks, um, with the, um, trying to be more innovative. So we thought, okay, we know about innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can offer them a service uh, in corporate innovation, so we can help them innovate, be more innovative, be more agile, be more lean, have, be more startup because some of them want to be more startup-like type of companies. Um, and yeah, we decide, okay, we can design a service to offer them and we can pitch to them and see how, how it goes. We can, we can actually, we can charge good money for, 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 for this. Uh, so we start pitching um, and fortunate, fortunately, one of the banks uh, liked our proposal so we signed a partnership they they were they were interested in launching a digital lab um and open on open innovation working on open innovation so we designed uh the the proposal to, for them to achieve this and uh after several several months, several months yeah. of negotiations we finally managed to sign the contract um, and yes I, was, I think that was it. it was a lot of work mm -hmm. well you mentioned that 
um, you realized that you could change your business model to basically now offer B2B services, mm -hmm. but still to keep your vision. Exactly. No. So we wanted mm -hmm. to do something. We, we were trying to find something. Okay, we, we still want to continue working on our projects, on our startups. We have Daya that we believe that had a lot of potential, but we need more time uh, because this is very new in the market. Nobody, almost nobody knows about crowdfunding. And so we need to work uh, on this. Um, but we need, at the same time, they is not sustainable yet uh, and neither salo. So what else we can do that it's on our core um, competencies, but at the same time can add value to others. And uh, we start looking at the market and what, uh, what, what was happening. And we saw, okay, this is, this is great. We know about innovation. We know how to bring innovation. So maybe we can help bring innovation to big companies. So how, you do, how we do it. So we did a lot of uh, market research because we are never reinventing the, the, yeah. the hill. Uh, we saw many other examples in other parts of the world, similar companies doing the same, including startup studios. So we decided, okay, let's copy this good practice, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure. Like I, I like to say, we're going to steal like an artist. <laughs> so uh, we basically uh, learn how other companies were doing and we adapt to our own market and accordingly to what we can deliver uh, because we can't do we don't know how to do everything but we learn uh, as much as possible and then we present this proposal and uh, yes that granted us the um, the the contract wow. thank you so much for sharing thank you yeah. <laughs>